Okay, good evening, everyone. For those of you who don't know uh, the assembled team, we have Mr. Jim Malatris to my right, who's the Director of State Operations. To my left, Mr. Robert Mejica, who's the Director of the Division of Budget, an especially appropriate division this evening. Uh, and Alfonso David, who's the uh, counsel to the governor. Uh, we have been um, going through a discussion all week long on the budget. Uh, earlier today, we reached a final resolution with all the I's dotted and all the T's crossed. The bills are being printed. Uh, the respective leaders are presenting the uh, final details to their conferences on the assembly side and the Senate side. Um, and we want to bring you an update at this time as to uh, what's actually in the budget. Uh, the budget is obviously for year 2016-2017. Uh, I am very excited about this budget. We call it a budget. Really, it's an overall operating plan for the state of New York. And I believe that this is uh, the best plan that uh, the state uh, has produced if it's passed uh, in decades, literally. Uh, to begin with, the uh, budget is designed to stimulate the economy and raise the minimum wage. There's been a lot of talk about raising the minimum wage, and the raising the minimum wage in and of itself is uh, a very progressive, uh, very uh, um, fair and appropriate initiative. Remember the Minimum wage law was passed by FDR, who was a great governor of New York. Concept was we value work, and if you work full time, you should have a decent living. That was the concept of FDR. The current minimum wage in the state of New York, although we've raised it in the past, uh, in our opinion, does not afford one the ability to lead a decent life. You can't lead a decent life, you can't raise a family on $18,000 a year in the state of New York. So we want to raise the minimum wage, which in and of itself would affect 2.3 million workers. At the same time, raising the minimum wage can be a stimulative uh, factor for the economy. You can actually increase economic performance by raising the minimum wage. Why? Because it puts more money into the economy. You give a person on a minimum wage, a raise, you know what they do with it? They spend it. They don't put it in the bank, they need it. Uh, on the current minimum wage, it would be about a $15 billion injection into the economy. So, when you look at the past times that the minimum wage has been raised, the economy has actually increased because of the raise in the minimum wage employment has actually increased. The key then is calibration. And you have this political debate, well, raising the minimum wage is good for the economy, well, raising the minimum wage is bad for the economy. The question is uh, really the calibration of the increase in the minimum wage. If you increase it at the right rate, all experts will agree that it can be a positive for the economy overall. If you increase it too quickly, people have a fear that it could have a negative impact. So what is the right calibration? Uh, you ask five different economists, you'll get five different answers. Why? Because they're all forecasting what they believe is going to happen in the future. They're all looking at their crystal ball saying, in five years this, in seven years this. If anyone really knew what the economy was doing in five or seven years, uh, they would be billionaires and they would be sitting on the beach, right? So what we've designed is a calibration mechanism that can be adjusted in the future when you know what the economy is doing in the future. Uh, and a calibration mechanism that understands there is no one state economy. There are variations in our economy. And in some areas of the state, uh, the economy is more robust. In some areas of the state, it's less robust. So a calibration mechanism that is attuned to the regional variations 
in the state. So um, where we came out, which is what we've been talking about uh, through the week, New York City, three years to $15. Uh, the one new addition, for those of you who've been watching every day, is in New York City, we extended from three to four years the length of time for businesses with fewer than 10 employees to get to $15. Uh, that, frankly, has been the, uh, the major adjustment uh, during the week. Long Island and Westchester is six years, which is uh, what we have been discussing. The rest of New York State, upstate, as we've been referring to it, uh, in five years to $12.50 and then indexed to $15. At what index? At an index to be determined as the appropriate calibration at the time by the Division of Budget. So in five years, you're at $12.50. Uh, at that point, you will assess the economy in upstate New York, the strength of the economy in upstate New York, you will determine uh, what rate of increase for the minimum wage is best suited to continue to grow the upstate economy. Um, I am very proud that as governor, I have spent more time and resources helping upstate New York than probably any governor in history, believe it or not. Uh, between the regional economic development councils, the Buffalo Billion, uh, the URI project, et cetera, we have a tremendous investment in upstate New York. It is working very well. We believe, believe the increase in the minimum wage can help the upstate economy, but again, it's all about that calibration. And this is the smartest, safest way to go about it, in my opinion. Uh, 21250 and then an index, which will be determined by the Division of Budget, based on economic factors at the time. Beginning in 2019, the state can suspend the scheduled increases if the economic conditions warrant, okay? This is a safety valve that is basically a further extension of the calibration. You want to increase it at the right rate, and if the economy turns, you want to be able to uh, pause it, have a safety valve. Um, Again, the economic forecast is not just the economic forecast for this state. It's what is the economy of the nation doing in three, four, five years? Uh, what is the international economy doing in three, point, uh, three, four, five years? Nobody really knows. If the economy turns, we'll have the ability to uh, suspend the minimum wage uh, so we don't hurt a slowing economy. Second, the budget includes paid family leave, which is something I am very excited about it. I spoke about it in the state of the state. Uh, this will affect the quality of life of millions of people in the state. Uh, and it's, it's basic, it's simple. We don't live at work, we live at home, we live with families, and we should have the capacity to be there when the family needs you whether it's a good news or bad news situation, whether you're bringing a new life uh, into your family and a mother or a father want to be able to take time to stay home or uh, the family is, is losing a member and you want to be there to share that, that time with that individual, uh, you shouldn't have to be, be in a position where you have to choose between a paycheck and being there for your family and paid family leave does just that. It's 12 weeks, it'll be the longest period in the country. It's funded by the employee contributions, uh, benefits up to two thirds of what the paycheck was. And as uh, I've been saying, it is literally a life changer. The budget also includes a $4.2 billion middle class tax cut, uh, which is a truly significant tax cut. We have been cutting taxes in the state all along. Uh, we have historic lows when it comes to the income tax rate, and this will bring historic lows even lower. Uh, it will affect the rates 40 to 150 
and 150 to 300. So it's literally from $40,000 to $300,000 for couples filing jointly. Uh, it's a very broad swath of taxpayers. It will bring the rate down to 5.5%, which is the lowest rate in 70 years. We are investing more in education than ever before. $24.8 billion, the largest single investment in education in the history of the state of New York, period. 6.5% increase over last year. It will eliminate the so-called GEA in one year. GEA has been a very controversial topic. It began before I became governor. Uh, it's when uh, school districts were cut during Governor Patterson's administration. And um, basically, the state issued what has been perceived as an IOU to those school districts. And this will pay off those IOUs in one year. It will also dedicate $100 million to transform failing schools into community schools. And this is very important to me. We talk about the level of education funding. We don't talk enough about the targeting of education funding. And the priority should be the schools that need the most help in this state. The schools that need the most help in this state are what's called failing schools. There are 144 of them. They're in the poorest places of the state. This targeting to community schools goes directly to the failing schools, not just to um, uh, lower income districts, but the schools in that district that have the greatest need. So it is truly uh, the most specific targeting that the state has used. Budget also supports the largest infrastructure plan in our state's history. Uh, the legislation that we pass in this building is important. The work we do in this building is important. Um, what is just as important, if not more important, is the actual construction that the state does, the development, the building, the infrastructure. We saw that with the Tappan Zee Bridge, where we uh, not only addressed the critical infrastructure need, but we showed that it could be done, right? Tappan Zee Bridge is not just a bridge, but a, a symbol of possibility to me. Uh, we were doubting our own capacity for a long time. And uh, the Tappan Zee Bridge says, yes, you can. Uh, we know that we needed to, but it showed that we can actually uh, engage and we can build efficiently and effectively. This budget supports a massive uh, infrastructure construction program. Literally $27 billion for the MTA, which is the largest capital plan for the MTA. It supports uh, the Penn Farley reconstruction, which is a critical traffic hub in the city of New York. The Penn Station and Farley Station, that transportation hub, is one of the most widely traveled on the globe. More people go through Penn and Farley than go through our three airports, downstate airports, uh, plus Newark and New Jersey, Kennedy, LaGuardia combined. That's how many people go through Penn Station. And it really is an inferior, substandard station. It has been for years. It's uh, a disgrace, frankly, that it's been allowed to operate for as long as it has. It's not technically owned uh, by the state of New York. It's owned by Amtrak. LIRR, the Long Island Railroad, leases space in Penn Station from Amtrak. But between Penn and Farley, uh, there'll be a total comprehensive redevelopment. It also has funding for the uh, new airport at LaGuardia. It also has $1 billion for the Second Avenue subway to continue that project, which is very important to New York City. $27 billion for the Department of Transportation, so this quote unquote parity between the downstate investment and the MTA of $27 billion, and $27 billion for uh, DOT, upstate roads and bridges, water and sewer, also, $200 million for an upstate airport design competition. Upgrade your infrastructure. 
it's the single best common denominator to help economic growth. And all of this, and for the sixth year in a row, we're keeping spending below 2%. 2% is a lower rate of spending increase than uh, any of my predecessors in modern history. It's a lower rate of spending increase than uh, Governor Spitzer, Patterson, Hugh Carey, Mario Cuomo, uh, Rockefeller. So it is a tremendous display of fiscal discipline, which has worked for the state and at the same time, you see more education funding than ever before, uh, the largest infrastructure development program, et cetera. It also includes uh, in this budget $20 billion for the Housing and Homeless Action Plan that we spoke about in the State of the State, uh, $54 million to combat terrorism. This developed over the past few weeks, uh, frankly, after the Brussels uh, incident. Uh, New York uh, is a target. We are well prepared. Um, we are trained. We are uh, on top alert. But uh, I think being prepared for terrorism is an ongoing um, battle and it's going to be an ongoing exercise, unfortunately, uh, uh, into the future, I believe. So of $54 million uh, for additional terrorism-related, uh, anti-terrorism-related activities. $15 million for non-public school safety grants. This is in addition to mandated services. Charter schools get more help and more funding. Uh, regional Economic Development Council's round six. $100 million for the Downtown New York State Re Revitalization Initiative. Uh, $300 million for the Environmental Protection Fund, which is very important. Uh, farm workers are also included in the minimum wage. I'm very excited about that because that's been a group that has been overlooked for too long. There's been a lot of talk about helping farm workers. There's been very little action. Um, it is probably the most expansive budget and state plan um, that the state has passed, as I mentioned before, in decades. It also is done at a very difficult political time. Not especially in the state of New York, but this is a difficult political time in this country. Uh, I can't remember a time of more political chaos, more political heat on both sides of the spectrum. Uh, and truly the politics nationally are at a high boil. Um, we believe here in New York, and the past six budgets have shown that we believe government can work. We believe you can have Democrats and Republicans who can work together and reach a compromise. We believe you can have a Senate and Assembly that start with different priorities and reach compromise. Uh, and to me, this budget shows that even when the political temperature is as high as it is uh, at this time in history. And uh, I have tremendous respect for both leaders who uh, have been working on this budget for many, many weeks. Uh, Senator John Flanagan, I think, has done an extraordinary job. Speaker Carl Hasty uh, has done an extraordinary job. And the politics that are happening nationwide also reverberate in the state of New York. Don't kid yourself. Uh, we have people in New York State who are as liberal as any people in the country. We have people in New York State who are as conservative as any people in the country. Uh, so uh, we, we feel the political turmoil. And uh, I applaud the leaders for coming up with this diverse plan a plan that does this much good in this many different areas, from economic development to construction to tax cuts, et cetera, uh, at one of the most difficult times. Uh, as I said, they're prepared, they are presenting it to their conference. Uh, they have been talking to the conference for weeks. There aren't many details that have changed uh, over the uh, past few days, and we still have a vote to take. Uh, and we'll see what the uh, consequence of the vote is, but uh, they have done a really extraordinary job. And this state 
as I've said before, is not just another state. This is a state that has a proud legacy and history of leadership. And uh, this budget, I think, once again, makes New York State the progressive leader. We were the progressive leader on social justice when we passed marriage equality. And we set a very powerful precedent all across the country. What we did with the SAFE Act and gun control was a powerful message all across the country. Uh, so we were leaders in social justice, and now we're leaders in economic justice. This minimum wage increase will be of national significance. Um, and not just the raising of the minimum wage, but how we did it. It's not just raising the minimum wage, it's raising the minimum wage in a way that is responsible and is a positive for the overall economy and developing a calibration mechanism that allows you to adjust, to say, well, if you raise the minimum wage, it can only be good. It depends. It depends. A lot of questions, in truth, come down to it depends. Uh, not black and white. It depends. It depends on what the economy is doing and how fast you're phasing in the minimum wage. So you have to develop a sophisticated mechanism to deal with that calibration. And this policy does that. Uh, while it really does increase the wage for people who truly need it. So uh, we're excited about it. It's been a lot of work. Uh, the leaders have agreed to it. And again, it's not done until it's voted on by their conferences. Uh, but they've been talking to their conferences all along. They'll have the uh, the votes uh, tonight, I guess, depending on their schedules, uh, how long it goes. But those are the uh, final details. The bills are being printed and will be uh, distributed as we go. With that, let me turn it over to the learned crew who actually did all the work and have been up for days and days uh, slogging through the details. But any of you gentlemen have anything to add? <coughs> Bob, you want to go first? Yeah, I'll just give an overall perspective of the financial plan. The 16-17 budget will be about $147 billion all funds. It's about $96.2 billion state operating funds. Again, this will be the sixth time that a budget will be in New York State will have to be 2%. Again, keeping within the rate of inflation. The largest percentage increases in the budget are going to be school aid. Uh, the school aid number is about $24.8 billion. That represents 6.5% growth. Medicaid is growing by about 18.5%. That's about 18.5 uh, billion, 3.4% growth. And higher education at 7.2%. The rest of the budget is relatively flat. Uh, from the governor's budget, we added about $1.4 billion in, in legislative adds and changes to the budget. It includes the largest uh, school aid number in history. And it includes the funding for the capital plans um, that the governor mentioned, which is about, about $54 billion between the <clears throat> DOT plan and the MTA and the MTA plans. So overall, again, the budget's in balance, 2% growth for the, sixth, for the sixth time with an overall spending number of $96.2 billion. Mr. Council, everything I said, was it legal? Everything the governor said was legal. <laughs> and all of the provisions in the, in the budget are legal as well. Um, I just want to highlight one point, uh, which is paid family leave, and the governor spent a little bit of time talking about it. Uh, this program, of course, is going to be the most aggressive in the country, 12 weeks. Uh, you will see that it will phase in over uh, four years. And we anticipate that the cost to employees will be minimal, uh, around 70 cents a week, going up to $1.47 a week. The program itself will be monitored by the State Insurance Fund, by the Workers' Compensation Board, and by the uh, Division of Department, I'm sorry, of Financial Services. Uh, we anticipate this program is going to benefit millions of people throughout the state, and we've worked uh, a number of weeks getting to get here and uh, are very happy uh, at the possibility of seeing paid family leave come to New York. Well said. James Malatris, Director of State Operations. Everything has been said, but I'll fill in a couple more important key provisions uh, within the budget. The uh, governor secured his $20 billion 
homeless and housing plan, which is a, a very exciting and dynamic plan to be developed. In addition, we are focused on ending coal in New York State by 2020, so we secured a $30 million fund to help local communities offset those tax and other revenue losses potentially. Um, we have $25 million to fight uh, poverty in uh, 15 or 16 regions of the state uh, based on the successful Rochester model that we initiated last year. And finally, uh, we focused on $50 million of funding, uh, additional funding for the governor's inner city youth uh, jobs program, which has been a highly successful jobs program to connect um, inner city um, uh, minority youth, particularly to uh, high paying uh, jobs in their communities. Thanks, Governor. Thanks. Question.